In this video, you are going to learn how you can use the one phrase automation using Zapier Central. If you don't know what Zapier Central is, it's a ChatGPT like experience where you can add different behaviors, actions, as well as data sources. So if you want to access this, you can go to zapier.com slash central. You're going to land on this page. And as you can see here, it's currently in preview, so it's not even in beta. So keep in mind that this is in development and a lot of functions are changing as we speak. But in this case, you wanna go and try central today. And then you're going to be redirected to a page Page that looks like this it's central.zapier.com and you can see that it looks very similar to chat gpt now if you want to know and get an overview about the platform go and check out my other video where i showed you exactly everything that you need to know about this and how you can use it in this video we're just focusing on the one phrase automation so let's just start with it so the first thing is that we are going to go and create a new bot over here and it's then going to create a new chat or conversation for you and you can see that on the bottom you have three different options you have behaviors, instant actions, and data sources. For this example, we are going to be using Google Sheets as our data source. So I'm going to click on the data sources, and then I'm going to click on add a data source. And currently at this time, you have five different options. You can see that you can also let them know if you want more here. Remember, this is in preview, so a lot of data sources can be added in the future. In this example, we are going to be using Google Sheets. So I'm going to click on that one. And automatically, you can see that it recognizes that you have already connected your Google Sheet account with Zapier. So all the apps that you have connected with Zapier are going to be automatically connected to your Zapier Central as well. So I'm going to go and click on spreadsheet. And in this case, we can see that we have different sheets in my Google Drive. And we are going to be using this one, which is called Leads Database. So I'm going to click on that one. And I'm going to click on Add Data Source. And right now you can see that the data source is going to start to sync. So all the data in your spreadsheet is going to be pulled into Zapier Central. After a few seconds, you can see that we are done. You can see that there is a small warning over here. So if you click on see more, you can see that it's just letting you know that this feature is going to use the first 26 columns of your spreadsheet. So in this case, if you have more than 26 columns, Keep in mind that only the maximum of 26 is allowed, but 26 is more than enough. You can also click on the table and it's going to display the Google Sheet directly inside your Zapier Central. So you can see we have different leads in this example. I've just copied multiple ones so we can have something to work with. And here's a quick way how you can allow which columns you want to use. So in this case, when you click on the fields, you can see that I can remove the row, for example, or I can remove the lead ID if that's not necessary. And I I can quickly edit back as well right and in this part i thought that i would quickly show you how you can pull the leads to your google sheet so then you can have this data source that you can later on connect to your zapier central feel free to skip to the next chapter if you know how to do this but the first thing is that you want to go and choose hubspot as your trigger and in the event section you want to go and look for new contact every single time we get a new lead we want to pull it and display it in our google sheet as well you then want to go and connect your account with your hubspot credentials and then in the trigger, you want to specify if you want to add additional properties, aka columns to retrieve. And in this case, these are the default ones that Zapier is going to pull from HubSpot. But you can see that I'm also retrieving additional property. So if you want to retrieve something that you don't see here, you can just simply go and search for it over here. In all of my HubSpot forms on my website, I have also a field called message and I want to pull this into my Google Sheet as well. All right, so I have added that one and then you can go and test this out. In this case, you can see that I I have already tested this and I got the lead from HubSpot. And as the first action after the trigger, you can see that we have a event called create spreadsheet row. We want to pull that lead from HubSpot and insert it in our Google Sheet. So we are going to create a new row in the account section, make sure that you have connected your Gmail account. And then in the action, in the drive, you wanna go and choose your drive where your sheet is located. This would be my Google Drive in this case. And then in the spreadsheet, you wanna go and choose the exact name of the spreadsheet. In this case, that would be the lead database. And then you can see that there is only one worksheet in the spreadsheet and it's called HubSpot. So I'm going to choose that one. And then what you wanna do is that you wanna use the dynamic variables from your trigger and you wanna allocate them to the right columns in your Google Sheet. So for example, you can see here industry, and then I went on and I just used the search function and I searched for industry, which is a dynamic variable that I can add directly under this column named industry. So I went on and I put all the appropriate dynamic variables 
to their columns and then you can go and test this action whether it works for me it has worked and it has added a new row directly inside my google sheet all right so we needed to do this for two different reasons the first one is that you can add only limited amount of data sources so for example hubspot is not found over here so that's why you can go around it with creating this automation that i have just shown you and then the second reason is that if you go and try to use behavior you can see that if we go to trigger and if we search for hubspot you're not going to be able to find a trigger that is automatically pulling all of your leads from hubspot so this is a very quick around how you can create your database directly inside google sheet remember that you can also add uh, zapier tables for example so i have shown you zapier tables in another video which i'm going to link down below as well but all your leads can go to your zapier table as well instead of google sheet and then you are going to perform exactly the same steps that i'm going to show you right now so how you can add the one phrase automation is very simple in this case we are going to be using the first option behaviors and we're going to click on create behavior. In the first field, you have to specify your instructions. And for this, just to save time, I'm going to go inside my database and I'm going to copy the instructions for this specific scenario. You can find my database in the first link in the description down below. And I'm just going to paste it over here. In this case, we're going to be summarizing the number of leads. And we are also going to be analyzing the leads in terms of the different growth percentages on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. All right, so then what you wanna do as the next step is to add a trigger and this is where you can add the one phrase automation so you can see that this one over here is saying when i message the bot that's exactly what you want to choose and then you can see that you can specify a different phrase or keyword so in this case i'm just going to say leads question mark because every single time i message this chatbot i want to know the current state of our leads the number of leads that we have received as well as the percentages growth and which industries and regions are the most common ones so i'm going to add this trigger and then you can either test it directly over here but if you turn it on you can just close this window and then if you go you can double check yes your behavior is turned on and right now when we go I can write down leads and send this over. And then you can see you get a message like this. If you click on this arrow over here, you can see that it successfully recognized the phrase leads. And then you can click on the reply button over here. You can see what it has been doing behind the scenes. So at this point it's thinking. So we have to wait a few seconds. Right now it's running the code. And just like that, we got the results. So let's check that out. Here is the latest update on our lead table. Total leads received 14. Then we get the one day, the seven days, days as well as 30 days and then in terms of the growth metrics we have the day over day percentage growth week over week month over month and year over year so let's check that out we have a zero percentage growth day over day if i go to the lead table that seems correct we can see that today is 20th of april and then on the 19th which was yesterday there was only one lead as well and that gives us logically a zero percentage growth we didn't grow we stayed on the same baseline All right so that's impressive because it can also calculate different metrics we also have the last part which we included in our instructions for this week the top industry and the country in terms of the leads received are apparel and fashion in united states and that's also correct because as you can see here i just multiplied the leads and at this point we have just united states and apparel and fashion as an industry in the table one thing i'm going to mention is that you can always go to your data source and you can always see when the last thing happened so in this case, this was four minutes ago. Sometimes what I found out is that it doesn't really sync appropriately. So you sometimes have to do it manually and you can do that by clicking on these three dots over here and then you can click on sync now. And then when it's done, you can see that it will give you a time when the last thing happened. All right, you can also name your bot. So you can go into the corner over here and I'm going to name it lead analyzer. You can also go to your activity over here and then you can see all the history that you have had with the chatbot and if you want to get more settings you can go to these three dots over here you can rename your bot you can start from fresh or you can delete your bot all right so this was an introduction to one phrase automation i think this is a very clever feature because you can use this to stay updated every single day when you work remember that this is a very new product from zapier and it's been worked on as we speak so a lot of changes can happen to this we might not even see it being launched fully who knows but at this point i must say that i'm very impressed and i totally recommend you to go and check that out 
it's completely for free once again you can go to the landing page that i'm going to post below and you can check that out totally for free on your own if you want to know more about zapier central and different examples with a tutorial go and check out this video that you can right now see on your screen thank you so much for watching and have a great day